knackers. So I am bringing you back for another jam session. I thought I was totally done with cherries and a friend of mine um, brought me a probably 15 or 20 pound box of cherries and said, could you make me some goodies? So she has a couple of requests, um, some that I've already done videos on. Um, and then she said, just surprise me, make me some things and I know all of them. So I uh, watched a video on Paul's rule of thumb the other day on balsamic cherry preserves. And um, I thought, man, I bet that is a great combo. That sweet and sour. Oh, it just sounded very, very tasty to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you along for a recipe. I'm going to tweak it a little bit from his uh, because he uses the low sugar pectin and I don't use that. So uh, in order for my pectin to work, um, which I just bought the other day, um, I needed some more. You guys saw in one of my videos that I was running out or ran out. I can't remember. And uh, I went to the grocery store and they were totally out of pectin except for the individual packs. They didn't have any of the bulk pectin that I, I like to use. Um, and I'm not going to spend three or four bucks a box for pectin. That to me is just, it's too expensive. So I got on Amazon and looked at bulk pectin and saw the reviews for that one and bought it. And I just made um, a batch of the sweet cherry jam for her last night and the pectin worked fantastic. So I'm gonna be making another batch of the balsamic cherry jam uh, for her today. And uh, I'll be keeping a jar or two from every batch as well, so pretty excited. So what I'm gonna be doing to tweak um, Paul's recipe a bit is kind of following the recipe that I did for the sweet cherry jam before. Um, I'm going to be using four cups of the chopped pitted sweet cherries. Instead of the four tablespoons of lemon juice, I am going to put in the balsamic vinegar and leaving out all of the um, spices and the amaretto liqueur. Instead of using that, I'm going to replace that with the balsamic vinegar. So I'm hoping between the four cups of the vinegar and the quarter cup of vinegar, that using the whole five cups of sugar, I'll still get that nice, sweet, and tangy flavor. Um, and of course, I will do a taste test and let you guys know for sure before um, it's jarred up. My fingers are crossed. So anyway, what I'm going to do first is I have my um, food processor here, and I have my blade in there, and I'm just going to kind of coarsely chop these up. I could put them in and um, measure out four cups, put them in, do all that. Um, but I want the full four cups of the chopped cherries. So, um, oops, it would work a lot better if it's plugged in. So I'll just pull these up a bit. And I started out with probably more cherries in there than I should have. Now I will tell you guys, I think on one of my videos, um, I showed you the um, pitter that I was using. And I used that pitter last night and was getting her um, cherries ready for that jam. And um, as I was making the jam, well actually before that even, as I was using my um, food processor, I can't remember if I used it for the other jam or not. For some reason I feel like I should have, but there were a ton of pits. I picked out probably four or five in the food processor. And then um, as I was stirring it around, I kept seeing more pits and I thought, what the heck? So today I am hand pitting these. Um, I'm gonna have to just let her know that in the sweet cherry jam, there might be a few um, pits and to be careful, but I tried to get them all out. But I bet I picked out uh, 10 pits and that just is unacceptable. So. Um, I need to do something different about that. So let me get this cleaned out because I think I'm going to end up with just at four cups of cherries. So that was luck. That was kind of a big hunk right there, but that's okay. It's going to cook down and get nice and soft. I 
think that's good enough. And let's look over here. Are we at four cups? We are at four cups. Yeah, because that's four and a half. All right. So let's dump these in. Oh, and I better clean that out too. Don't leave any of that goodness behind. And then to be honest with you, I wasn't prepared for um, having exactly four cups of cherries, so I don't have anything else ready. So I'm gonna grab my other goods and get those ready and, and I'll bring you back. All right, so we're gonna get our quarter cup of balsamic in. There's that, and Becca is totally disgusted right now. She cannot stand the smell of that vinegar, but she's she's dealing with it because she loves her mama. <laughs> One. Oh, my mouth is watering just even thinking about the sweet tangy combo mm, so good all right so there's that and we'll need to add in the pectin and uh, last night I just treated this pectin just like I would the ball um, so I just put in my six tablespoons and a little extra um, honestly once it's set up I, I don't even think that I need the extra this stuff is pretty pretty potent so I'm just gonna put in my six tablespoons Just like the other videos, we are going to get this up to boiling, and at that point is when we will add our sugar. So um, I'll bring you back then. All right, so it is up to a boil. So I am going to add in the five cups of sugar. That was five, right? I think that was five. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I count out loud. I know that can probably be kind of annoying, but um, at least count. <laughs> uh, I think that was five. So we are going to get this up to a rolling boil again, and it will boil for at least a minute. The jam is ready and it has a very, very good flavor. The balsamic is, um, I would say it's not super prevalent, um, but it has a nice background to it. The jam is still really sweet. Now I will say I tasted it and Becca tasted it and the smell kind of reminds me of this sauce that um, we had the other day when we were at Arby's. It was a, I think it was a raspberry sauce of some sort, but it was really good. Um, maybe just a tad sweeter than that other sauce, but I tasted this and I thought, you know, it's, it's kind of missing some heat. You know, there's just some flavors that the sweet and the sour and the heat kind of need to go together and I feel to me like this is one of those flavors. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to make three jars um, just plain because this batch should make um, six jars. You know, should. Um, we'll see how many. I did get exactly three out of my, plus a little extra, um, out of my uh, sweet cherry jam from last night. So um, I'm going to do three of the regular, and then for um, the other three, 
I am going to throw in a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and mix it around in the jar. I, before I started ladling this out this go round, I uh, skimmed off the foam and I stirred in a quarter teaspoon of the red pepper flakes into the foam. And um, hopefully I'll let that set for a few minutes and give it a try and see if I kind of like that heat to it. So we'll see. But I'm going to finish filling up um, these two, the last two of the regular, and then I'll bring you back for the, the sweet heat one. So what I did was um, I should I decided to do four jars of the regular just because I don't know uh, how she feels about heat. So um, I will make this hot and then I'll talk to her about it later. And if she doesn't want to try the heat at all, I'll just keep the two jars. And if she does, then um, she'll get one and I'll get one. So in my... Um, foam I had added a quarter teaspoon of the red pepper flakes I stirred it up and then while I, I let it set while I was um, putting the other four jars regular jars in and Becca and I tasted it and just like you know there's a, there's something with the sweet that sometimes it takes a lot more heat to be able to get that heat um, and that's what I found with the foam was that there really there was a little bit of background heat but really not much so instead of doing a quarter teaspoon for each of the pints left in here, I'm doing a half a teaspoon. So I put in a full teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. It's been stirring up for um, a few minutes now, so hopefully those are nicely well incorporated and given off some of their heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and get these jarred up. I am really, oh, this is gonna be a little on the more awkward side. I'm working backwards from how I normally do. But that's okay. I love the pop of those red pepper flakes in there. That's really pretty. Hopefully they're well dispersed in there. I'll take a look once I get one made up. You know, I've made a red pepper pineapple jam. And let me tell you, that stuff is delicious. But uh, the first time that I did it, all of my red pepper flakes floated to the top. And, uh, you know, the flavor was still good. You could open it up and stir it up and it was fine. But uh, when you're looking at it, you want to see all the flakes spread throughout there, especially that contrast of the pineapple yellow and um, the red. But it was really good. So let's see. Oh, yeah, they're well dispersed in there. That's going to be perfect. Excellent. Yeah, I think this is going to make for some really good, uh, like, chicken strip dip. Um, yum, it's making my mouth water. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. I'm just tickled pink. Okay, good. I'm tickled red, you know, the cherries. All right, well, we'll see if there's just a full jar left in there. Maybe I'll get three. Uh, it doesn't really look like there's three. Oops. That helps. I don't think there's going to be three in there. There might be um, a little bit left for me to put into um, over the top of the foam, but there's not going to be another full jar, which is good. That means it came out just about perfect, just like it did last night which is very, very unusual, as you know, for all you canners out there. And then one time you get it perfect, the next time it won't be. That is absolutely gorgeous. You know, it's so hard when you're seeing these on... Um, the YouTube screen because what we're seeing in person is just so different I think than what comes across because it's it is beautiful <laughs> that cherry red in there is just very very pretty but I don't know how well that's going to be coming across on the screen maybe uh does it come out a little bit more uh, it probably does yeah I think that probably comes across really 
out of the pan instead of intensified in the jar. Those two stuck together. All right, so this one's gonna go in the canner and I'm gonna get that up to boiling and they're gonna process for 15 minutes. I will bring you back when they're finished. Well, there we go. Out of the canner. Now I think these two, yeah, they look slightly different in color from that end one. So I'm hoping <laughs> that those are the spicy ones because I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of hard to tell. Anyway, once they're cooled off and I can handle them a little bit, I will um, see if I can tell the difference. Fingers crossed. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.